Hey cleaning business owners, this is Derek with Cleaning Business Builders, although today I'm hanging out in my new business handyman connection. I've owned it for a week and a day now, so I'm uh, making lots of changes around here. So I'm talking today about work-life balance because I'm shooting these videos sort of stream of consciousness of what's going on in my life and owning multiple businesses including a new one. Work-life balance is pretty important. And uh, we have a couple sayings at uh, Cleaning Business Builders, one of which is what gets measured is what gets done. But I'm also a believer in what gets scheduled is what gets done. So I'm going to talk to you about how some of the things I do to achieve work-life balance and also kind of tell you a story of a side effect of it of how I accidentally ended up on a date. And I'm married, by the way, so I shouldn't be dating. Very bad. But we'll get to that later. Um, so one of the things I do to manage all my businesses is Tuesday is meeting day. Um, once a week, I step away from the businesses and switch into 100% CEO mode. So I have meetings all day long. So 8 a.m., I meet with my sales team at Handyman Connection, just added that this week, and go over what they're selling, what's in the pipeline, what can we expect to be coming on board in the next week. At 8.30, I meet with uh, the team at Cleaning Business Today, our trade publication. Uh, so Tom, Austin, and I talk about uh, what are the articles going to be, what's our advertising plan, what type of new products are we going to launch. Now, 9.30, I meet with the team over at Blue Skies Services. Um, I'm an investor with Blue Skies and also a consultant to them, so I attend their management meeting where we talk about key measures. 10.30 to 11, I get a 30-minute break to move around, maybe eat something. Then 11 to 1, Tom, Liz, and I meet for Cleaning Business Builders, where we work on our new products, our services, um, things like that. Uh, from 1 to 1.30, I've got a break to eat lunch. And then 1.30 to 2.30, I meet with the Castle Keepers team. Um, just like with Blue Sky Services, Castle Keepers is someone who I do some consulting with, and I'm helping them expand across the country. And we've got a conference call to discuss how that's all going to work together. From 2.30 to 3.30, I've got a conference call on a new acquisition we're working on. Can't share it yet, but we're working on a new market. So that's that call. 2.30, excuse me, 3.30 to 4, I've got a 30-minute break. And then 4 to 5, I meet with uh, Randy and Kyle with Real World Services in Columbus. So pretty much Tuesday from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m., with the exception of an hour and a half, I'm scheduled with calls. And on those calls, we go over key measures, what are the plans, what's the strategy, to make sure everything's staying on track. Now, I apply the same scheduling principle to my personal life. Now, I'm not going to recommend this to everyone I will bet 85% of you, maybe 90, are going to think this is a crazy system, but it works for my wife and I. I am happily married, have two kids, spend a lot of time with them, and part of the reason why is our scheduling system. So I might need a diagram to explain this. But Monday night, my wife is responsible for our kids, which means Monday night I'm free to do whatever I want. So Monday is the night that I work out with my trainer. Tuesday, I take care of the kids on Tuesday night. My wife goes and plays ice hockey. Wednesday night, my wife takes care of the kids, and Wednesday night, I normally go running. Thursday night, I take care of the kids again, and Becky plays Ultimate Frisbee. And then Friday night is a little bit complicated because we have a rotation. And uh, the way the rotation works out is it's a four-week rotation. One week, I have my daughter, and Becky's got my son. The next week, we flip. The week after that, I take both kids. The week after that, she takes both kids. So this ensures that every single week we each get some one-on-one -on -one time with one of our kids. And then, well, not every single week, once a month. And we normally try to make it something fun. I'll go to Kings Island with them, but something where I spend one-on-one -on -one time with them. And then also, uh, once every month, we get a Friday off to kind of do whatever we want. In my case, I normally work. Um, in Becky's case, she normally uh, goes and hangs out with her girlfriends. Saturday, Becky takes care of the kids during the day, and Saturday night, we have a date night. So we always have a date, just the two of us every Saturday. Sunday, I take care of the kids, and then Sunday night is family time. We do uh, family events, family dinner, and make sure that the whole family's together. And there's a few other things in there. Every Thursday morning, I take the kids out to a restaurant uh, for breakfast, and we get donuts and eggs and omelets and talk and hang out in the morning. So that's how we schedule it. And this ensures that every single night, that someone's watching the kids. Becky and I have time to work out, do whatever we're interested in. Um, and it avoids a lot of jealousy and arguments with us. When we first got married, I'd be upset that Becky would be hanging out with her friends. She'd be upset that I was working too much. And under this deal, on Monday and Wednesday night, if I want to work all night, that's cool. 
but I have to be home Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. non-negotiable. Um, now I can work out, I can stay at work, I could go hang out with my friends, I could do whatever I want, but that's the system that works for us. So recently I did a training event in Indianapolis and people were asking me, well, why did you do Indianapolis? And the real answer was, it was the Friday rotation where I was off from the kids. So Indianapolis is close enough that I could drive out Friday night, spend the night, teach the class on Saturday, go out to dinner with everyone on Saturday, be home in time for date night, Saturday night. So that's why I taught the class in Indianapolis. I didn't need to ask permission. Now, life isn't always that neat. Um, sometimes there's events or things we have to go to. But since we've got an outline, Becky and I kind of do swaps. So uh, sometimes on date night, the discussion towards the beginning, we're a little more romantic later on, is logistical of, hey, you know, I've got to have a meeting on Thursday night when I'm supposed to watch the kids. Can I swap Thursday for Wednesday with you this week? And we do that type of stuff. So what gets scheduled, what gets done, and this makes sure every single month, Becky and, or every single week, Becky and I have a date every single week our family spends time together, that our kids always have a parent at home, that we have time to work out and stay in shape, and everything is balanced for us, and we have time to do our projects. If I want to go to the comic book store, whatever, that's okay. And once a month, we get some one-on-one -on -one time with the kids, and once a month, we get a free day on a Friday night to do whatever we want. Now, how did I end up on a date? Well, Part of the reason why is, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but I don't wear a wedding ring. Um, I'm very uncomfortable with jewelry, just a little finicky thing with me. I don't like necklaces, watches, and I don't like rings. So I lost my wedding ring several times, at which point we decided it was best that I just not get them anymore. And about five years ago, before we had a second, my youngest, or my eldest, Lindsay, was about four years old at the time. And we didn't have any kids who lived on our street back then. Um, we moved since then. But back then, we didn't have any kids who lived on our street. So Lindsay always seemed a little lonely to me. And she was always talking about this kid at school, McKinsey. And McKinsey was her best friend. So I left McKinsey's mom a note that said, hey, you know, I'd love to go on a play date. Becky, Lin not Becky, Lindsay's always talking about McKinsey. I would love to get the girls together, et cetera. So we went on this play date. And on the play date, McKinsey's mom keeps asking these questions. And she's like, wow, you're really active with Lindsay. And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I am. I take care of her on every Monday and Wednesday night and every, you know, every Sunday. And um, remember, no ring. And as the night's going on, she starts with, you know, the casual touching and eventually starts moving to, to attempting to pet me, which is a little awkward. Um, and at that point, I start realizing something weird's going on here. And McKinsey keeps bringing up her dad. And I guess they were divorced or never married. And McKinsey's, I didn't know that when I set up the play date. Um, McKinsey's mom's like, McKinsey, stop talking about your daddy. Now's a bad time. And that's finally when it dawns on me that I never used the word married with this woman. Um, my wife has a name, it's Becky. So especially back then, I didn't tend to say my wife. I would say, oh yeah, I take care of, the, of Lindsay on Monday and Wednesday and Becky takes care of her on Tuesday and Thursday. And I realized I kind of sounded like a divorced guy. So uh, I had accidentally ended up on a date and actually felt really guilty because this woman was like, wow, what a great guy. He's so involved in his daughter's life. And look, our kids already love each other. And I'm sure she was already starting to imagine all the great things it could be. So I kind of freaked out at that point and was like, Lindsay, you got to go potty. She's like, no, I don't, Daddy. I'm like, yes, you have to go potty. Daddy needs time to think. So we went to the bathroom uh, so Lindsay could go potty and Daddy could think of how to get out of this. And I, at that point, had to figure out how to sneak in the words wife and married in a way that would let McKinsey's mom back off um, without being too embarrassed since it was my fault. So if you use this plan, I highly recommend you wear a wedding ring or you at least manage to tell people you're married. But that's how I achieve work-life balance. It may not work for everybody. It may be a little overstructured. My mom thinks it's the weirdest system in the world. Uh, but it works for us. And that's what matters in your life. And that's what's great about being an entrepreneur is you can develop your life, your systems, how you want to. And this works for us. And I hope it gives you some ideas. And uh, hopefully you follow us at Cleaning Business Builders. Thanks.